Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to customising your airbrush. Is it worth doing? My personal opinion is yes. Give it a go guys because you can make your brush absolutely personal to you. Give it the tweaks you want, make it more comfortable, more responsive, softer in the trigger, a better trigger, a better needle and nozzle setup, and you can make a sort of cheaper brush into a real full on detailed brush. Now, I've got three brushes here that I've sort of tweaked and made them custom to myself and they all perform brilliant. I know exactly how they work, how the paint needs to be to be dialed in for each brush and I've just made them more comfortable and more responsive. So the first brush that I've done the tweak to is a Creos PS270. Now the original 270 would look like this with the body on the back. So you've got your 270 with the body like that and you've got your adjuster to the back. Now, I don't like the adjusters to the back. I don't use them. I just fully open that up. So it gives you full control of the trigger. And that's something you need to learn as a beginner. You need to learn the full control of that trigger. The better you can get your trigger response in, the better you will become an airbrusher. So I always had them opened up. So I took the body off the back for a start. Now the backs of these bodies are quite heavy. So losing the weight of the back of the brush, I then, put a different collar here so it brings the body and slopes down and then made like a little bullet point to the back that fits to the chuck. Now, this gives you more response in the trigger because the back end of the brush is now open. And when you pull back on the trigger, you're getting the feel of that trigger through the back part of your finger. So it makes it sort of one whole movement all the way across as you move back on the trigger you're getting that feel of that trigger all the way through your finger to the back of the brush. And it slows your trigger down as well, because sometimes you can be pulling back on the trigger and you're sliding against a smooth body and you've really got to try and dial your finger in. But this way, you're getting full contact of the brush from there to there. So it's made it a better brush. I changed the crown cap because it had the prong on the front. I've changed this for an eye water, sort of the one you get on the H, you get it on this one, the same sort of crown cap you get on the HPC Plus. So it's the same crown cap as that. It just goes over across to the PS270. So that's the one I changed on there. Now, performance on this now, we'll hook it up to an airline. I'll drop some paint in it. I've had a bit of a play off camera with some paint, just giving these a little blast. I've got the Dread Effects tip tool there. Now, if you've not seen that, it's an absolute godsend. It's magnetic, so you can put it, if you're working on a car, you can just magnetize it to the car and you can just rub the front of your brush through it and you've got no more tip dry. There's none of this picking the front of your brush every time. You can just run it like that and you're good to go. Nice, quick and easy. And that's what it's about. You don't want to be fiddling around, pulling paint off the front of your brush. So, PS270S, it just instantly gets down on detail guys, this thing, and it's made it a lot more responsive in the trigger because you're getting feedback all the way through to the back of your finger here and your finger here is touching the back part of this column that I've put on the back. So it just, slows your movement down and you can get really dialed in a lot easier. It would make it a very nice beginner's brush with this setup like this because the beginner would get the feel and the feedback through his whole hand instead of just trying to master the trigger and pull back. You get that nice bit of feedback through the whole brush. So. It's made it brilliant. It performs just the same as the PS270 would standard, but it's just gave it that more response in the trigger. You've got your MAC valve to the front. So another bonus for a beginner brush, you're getting a MAC valve to the front. So you can dial that air into what you want. Beauty of it being on the front of the brush, you're not leaning across to your compressor or scuffling around under your table trying to dial your air in because your compressor is usually always out of the way. You don't have them right next to you when you paint. 
because you're getting overspray and that compressor's sucking in air, so it's going to be sucking in overspray that's going into the compressor. So you always usually have the compressor out the way or it's in another room. So there's nothing worse than not having a regulator next to you where you can dial your air in, but you've got the mat valve on the front. You can dial that to what you want when you're working. And that's why I picked up the PS270. It's a brilliant brush, guys. Look out for it. It's the Creos range, Mr. Hobby. And that's the customization I've done to this one. So well worth doing. So that's the 270S. We'll move on to the next brush and it is a Harder and Steambeck. Now, this Harder and Steambeck is the Silverline, Evolution Silverline Solo, the FPC one, which has got the, you've got a lot sort of Mac valve here. So you can turn this and you can dial your air in instead of it being on the front of the brush here. These are a little bit fiddly, can be a little bit tight at times to dial in, but you can dial your air in. I usually have this open fully up and I'll either dial the air in on a valve on the thing here to get the air dialed in and leave that one open. But the tweaks I've done to this, this wasn't a CR Plus, so it was the older, it was the older body. Now the older bodies on the HSs tend to tarnish over time and over 13 years of using it, been chucking thinners through it, the bodies just go a little bit tarnished and the chrome goes a little bit dull. Now the new CR Plus ranges, the chrome on the bodies are better. But if you own one of these and you, you can still pick the old ones up, it's took 13 years of abuse to make it look dull. So don't worry about if you've not got the CR Plus, it will work absolutely fine as this still does. Now I had this electro plated, so it's like a rainbow edition. I've done the Teflon washer hack, which is on the channel guys. It's how to get better trigger response in your Infinity CR Plus or Evolution. So you're putting Teflon washers inside and it's made the trigger response a lot more because HNS is everyone used to say, you'd move back on the trigger and you get that sort of little bit of delay. It can be like a millimeter of delay, but when you're going in on detail, you're trying to find that spot for the paint and then once you get it, then you start painting. But with the hack to the back, it's made it better. The other tweak that I done to this was, this was a 0 0.2 as standard. This was a two in one brush. So I've got a 0 0.2 and a 0 0.4 mil needle and nozzle setup. So I took the front end of this one off and that's another beauty of HS. You can swap your setups on the brushes dead easy. So I changed this to the Infinite V2 setup on the 0 0.15 and I put the prong cap on because I prefer the prong cap when it comes to you get tip dry. We can still do that on the front and keep the prong cap on and it cleans the needle. So that's the tweak I've done to this one. We'll just get some air in this one, drop a little bit of paint in. Now this has made this brush, again, this thing, you've only got to touch the trigger now and you can see this paint's a little bit thick, but this thing gets ridiculously down on detail with it being the 0 0.15. That's like real fine lines with ease because the trigger response now on this brush is absolutely on point. You've only got to touch it and you are getting that super fine line straight away. So that was a tweak to the Evolution Civilized Solo. A brilliant brush guys, one to look out for. These ones are coming up quite cheap now. So if you want a real good detailed brush that's easy to clean, easy to strip down, Evolution Silverline Solo 2-in-1 or just the standard one. Change the front end to the 0 0.15 needle and nozzle setup with the V2, the newer one. Do the hack to the inside and you've got an amazing detail brush. You really have at a cheap price. Cheaper than what you would buy a Infinity for. Cheaper than a Micron and this will match a Micron on detail hands down, atomization and everything. So that's the Evolution Silver Life Solo with the tweak to the trigger and the tweak to the front. We'll now move on to the next brush, which is 
the Infinitaire, which has been around for a long time. They did the same with the Infinitaire. You had the old version, which was the non-CR Plus, and the body's tarnished. I've owned two of them in the past. I've still got one of the original bodies, which is tarnished. And then you've got the CR Plus. So I updated this to the CR Plus body. I've changed the back. So where the original Infinities were like an anodized red, sanded all that off and then Dremel polished all this up. So it's all nice and chrome. Then I've done the hack to the inside with a twin Teflon washer to the inside. So it gives you a real spot on trigger response. Changed the trigger top so it's flat instead of being a little scallop trigger and it's made it more comfortable. You get a full finger on the top of that and it's nice and comfortable. And then to the front of this, we've got the 0.15 V2 needle with the original 0.15 brass nozzle. Now, what makes this brush different on the 0.15 there that you can see there, you can see how much needle exposure is coming out of that which is nothing and then on this one the needle exposure if that is picking it up it's a lot more you've got probably near enough I would probably say three to four mil of needle exposure compared to probably two mil so it's made this brush a lot more finer but you can go sort of further back so you can move away from your paper a little bit more, but you can still hit them real fine details. You're not literally touching the needle to the paper. You're sort of steadying off the paper. And you are getting them super fine lines, but I'd say about five to six mil away from the paper, which gives you that little bit of extra view when you're going in on detail because you're not really close up to the paper, you're just off the paper, but you're getting that super fine that you would get normally where you're close right up. I mean, that is, that is ridiculously small guys. That's hairline with ease with this brush now because the trigger is absolutely on point. This paint is a little bit grainy, but you can just hit. No struggling, no angling your brush. You can just hit them fine hairlines every single time with ease because the trigger is more responsive. You just touch it and you're getting the paint out. So it's made the Infinitaire a better brush than standard. If you've just picked up an Infinite for the first time and it's your first brush, you probably won't feel the trigger response because you'll get used to it. You'll instantly pick it up as your first detail brush and you'll instantly go, yeah, that's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with my Infinite. Can't see what he's on about in trigger response. It's only until you pick up an Iwata or say a Sotar as your first brush, you try that and you're working with a Sotar or, 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 or Iwata then you go to an Infinite, then you try the trigger and you'll be going, hang on a minute, that don't feel right. But if you come straight from H&S and you're straight and it's your first brush, you won't recognize it until you've picked another brand up. And because I moved over to another brand, then went back and picked the Infinite, I thought, no, there's a de delay in this. But now I've done the hack to the inside, it's just made it like the others. You just touch it and it's there. So another great brush that's been tweaked that's my go-to detail brush is the Infinitec. Second one for detail because it's exactly the same setup with the 0.15 is the Evolution Brilliant Brush. So they're my sort of go-to. The PS270S will get the same sort of lines down as this it's got lovely feedback through the brush. Now I've tweaked it. So you're getting that full feedback in that trigger movement and it slows your trigger finger down because you're getting a little bit of resistance here. And it's made it just a better brush. It's better than sliding your finger across that because you can tend to slide back quite quick. This really 
dials in your finger now with this cutaway here. So I'm glad I did that onto the PS270. So they're my three custom brushes. Have a play guys with your brushes because you can change the characteristics of a spray, of an airbrush spraying by having a 0.2 nozzle and then dropping in and trying a 0.15 needle so the needle comes further out at the front. Try the V2 needle, the old needle. Try different needles in different nozzles where you'll put a different needle in a nozzle and you'll get a little bit of needle exposure. Just give a play. Have a play, see what it's like for you. Have a go with your springs and things like that because you can cut the springs down and make these softer for your trigger going back. You can change the springs in here to make them softer. So when you press down on there, you're not really having to press a spring down. You can go nice and soft. You can make these softer. Drew Blair does one for the Micron where it's the low, low rider trigger, which makes this piece lower down to the brush. I've also seen brushes like the Badger where you get the high roller trigger where it's right up here. Not tried one of them, I'm gonna trigger up here. Some people may like that. But there's loads of different tweaks. And I think that's what, companies have gone a little bit stagnant because they're not bringing out, they make one brush like the H&S, the latest one is, their detail brush is the Infinite. They've just brought out, another artist has brought out, the one I'm going to pick up next, which will be next week. I'll pop a picture up in the screen now because I can't pronounce his name. It's this one here. I'm picking this one up next week. So there's going to be a full review, spray test and strip down on this brush, up close and personal. We'll have a look at what changes this artist has done to this brush. And we'll compare it against my Infinity. And we'll see which one's best. So that's the brush I'm picking up next. As I say, a lot of companies are sort of stagnant on things coming up. They're not looking at what people want and things like that. They're just sort of stagnant. And then you've got all your Chinese copies and they're just copying brushes that are out there. So the market is just swamped with copied brushes of stuff that are all already out there. They're not sort of really getting dialed in and saying like, what do these actual airbrush artists want? And that's why I do these sort of custom brushes because it tweaks the brush and it just makes it better, more comfortable, better trigger response, softer springs, better. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a play with your brushes, try different springs and things like that and caps and see how you get on. So thanks for watching guys. Don't forget if you're new to the channel, click that subscribe, press that notification. I will see you in tomorrow's video when we're doing a little bit more on the Candyman sign. So we're gonna move on with that. I'll leave you with a couple of videos now that you can check out on a couple of reviews and things. Cheers, guys.